Hello, the internet, and welcome to Open Source Directions, hosted by Quantsight, the webinar that brings you all the news about your future, about the future of your favorite open source projects. My name is Anthony Skopatz, your host for Open Source Directions. Co-hosting with me today is Tony Fast. Hi, I'm Tony Fast. Uh, I'm a data scientist and open source consultant at Quantsight, and I'm also a commu PyData community manager in Atlanta. So uh, if you're ever down, uh, come, come find us at one of our meetings. And joining us today, we have Chrisman. So Chrisman. Hi, uh, I'm Chrisman. Uh, I'm an engineer working in the KuPy and Chainer teams at Preferred Networks, which is an AI startup in Japan. Awesome. Uh, so right at the beginning, uh, we're going we're di to dive into our personalization section. Uh, so this week, we have our Tweet of the Week section, where each of our panelists presents a tweet that they've been enjoying recently. Uh, Chris Mann, do you have one that you'd like to share? Yeah, actually, it's um, is it it's my own tweet. Is that allowed? Yeah, it's totally it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my company, Preferred Networks, this week uh, we just announced at CTEC, which is a big technology conference here in Japan, uh, that we're going to be developing personalized robots. So robots that you can actually have in your home. And we had a demo where the robot would go around. Uh, we had some prototypes where the robot would actually go around and pick up all the toys and put them in the toy box and the laundry and put in the laundry bin and garbage and throw it away for you. So uh, I'm just really excited to have a robot that now will be able to clean up my house so that I can turn on my Roomba to then vacuum my house. <laughs> so um, the, the future is beautiful. Yeah, that that's awesome. Sounds really cool. Uh, Tony? Uh, so uh, I haven't spoken with y'all uh, in a little bit. So this tweet this tweet came out early in October, uh, but Wes McKinney uh, had announced a collaboration between uh, Google Cloud and Two Sigma, Two Sigma, where um, Ibis is now available to do BigQuery. But what's really neat is that you can actually now write UDFs into BigQuery using Python. Uh, with the uh, IBIS interface. Um, and all of this stuff is available on CoLab. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty neat to be able to write SQL in all Python. Yeah, that, that's really awesome. That's cool. Um, so for my part, Aaron Muir writes, the mobile web was much better back before websites started trying to account for it. Um, and <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with uh, our former, former guest more uh, than that. So um, all right. So at this point, we're going to transition into talking about our the project. So today we're talking about Kupai. Um, and so just to give you a brief little overview, Kupai is an open source matrix library that's accelerated with NVIDIA's CUDA library. And Kupai's interface is highly compatible with NumPy. Um, you can think of it as a drop-in replacement for NumPy in most cases. It's got The project has about 2,300 stars on GitHub currently. Um, and it has over 40,000 downloads uh, from PyPI in the last month. There are 40,000 downloads from, from various sources. Uh, maybe uh, Chris Mann can clarify that. Do you, do you know what, if it's uh, PyPI or in total? Yeah. It's PyPI. Pi. OK, great. Uh, ye old cheese shop. <laughs> um, so uh, at this point, Tony and I are just going to ask you a bunch of questions and, and try to get a feel for, for what Kupai is. So. Uh, Tony, first up. Yeah. So, uh, Chrisman, uh, thanks for being on the show. And uh, I think the first logical question is, why was this project started? Well, the, the funny thing is it actually wasn't started as its own project. Um, Kupai was originally written as the back end for Chainer, uh, which is the Python artificial intelligence neural network uh, programming framework that we also write here at Preferred Networks. Um, it's open source. And um, originally, we were using uh, PyCuda, actually, which is uh, another um, project. But uh, um, we found that it didn't have enough of the uh, QDNN functions or the high neural network functions in it. So around version 2 of Chainer, we realized that separating the NumPy syntax on the GPU backend from the rest of the AI framework would uh, allow people who just wanted to do calculations uh, on the GPU to just use that framework alone, uh, the project for Kupai. 
So at that point, we decided to hive it off, make it into its own separate project. And at that point, the independent Kupai project was born. Uh, very cool. So it kind of came out of Chainer is a, is a nice way to think about it. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So are there any alternative projects out there? I mean, you mentioned uh, sort of one of the other ones, um, but you know, what else is, what else is out there in terms of the competition for, for, well, it's, a, it, it's a need that, uh, several other projects have, have realized, and there've been right. some partial implementations and attempts at, at working this out. So PyCuda was the one that we started using originally, but, um, one is that it wasn't a full implementation of, uh, all the deep library functions that are available in QDNN. And also, it didn't follow the NumPy syntax, which uh, our coders here were very familiar with. So having to learn a different uh, syntax to work with matrices and do matrix operations was cumbersome. So that's why we started making um, KuPy. There was also a, a MinPy at one point um, that was using NumPy syntax, but it uh, has merged into MXNet Gluon and has been all development has been discontinued as of about February of this year. I see. Um, yeah, so the, the, the GitHub uh, repo is now deprecated. Um, so at this point, I really think that we have pretty much a unique point, uh, unique sales uh, advantage, although it's open source, in that it is really for using NumPy syntax on the GPU, KuPy is established, and I think there's really nothing able to give the same level of functionality out there. Right. Yeah. So there, it, it fills a niche that no one else is filling. So anymore. Yeah. yeah. That that's great. So the software is open source. Uh, but uh, what uh, what kind of hardware uh, or technology is this is QPy built on? Well, it it uh, at this point it's primarily just Nvidia's uh, CUDA library. So uh, while I say that it allows calculation of the GPUs, at this point, NVIDIA's got a, a strong lead as far as the software and the libraries that they provide for it. So it uh, hooks into NVIDIA's CUDA library to allow calculations on the NVIDIA GPUs. Awesome. Gotcha. Um, so who in particular started Kupai or, or Chainer and who was kind of responsible for the original development of the code base? Well, it's interesting, actually. We had um, originally, Chainer was started by a separate person, um, uh, Tukwisan on our staff. And as he was working on it using the um, Pi CUDA at the time, but then it was actually a, a different person on our, uh, on our team, Yosuke Okuta-san, who then became the author and, and actually wrote most of the code for Kupai and got it to the point where it is today. And he's now uh, an executive here at our company. Oh, excellent. excellent. Well, so now that the uh, maintainer has moved, or the original uh, author has moved on, uh, who are the maintainers of the project now? Oh, he, he, he never left the job. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's always your code, right? <laughs> He's still the uh, the the prime guardian of it, and and spends late nights uh, working on it. Uh, that said, now we have we have teams here doing it, and it's an open source project. So we're we're oftentimes getting requ pull requests and issues and other things that we then work with or or work to move into it, and to help to guide the project. Excellent. Um, so what? Where would you say? most of your users and your contributors come from? Like what, what communities are you drawing from? Is it mostly the NumPy community or is it sort of more on the d data science or machine learning side or, or who, who's poking at this really? <laughs> I, think, I think about half of the people are people who are then using it as within the Chainer framework. I see. Um, but uh, we have really noticed that um, uh, it seems it feels like we made the right choice when we made it a separate project because there are actually far more or twice as many downloads for Kupai as there are for Chainer. So clearly, the the people who are using just Kupai itself is a significant portion. Right. And for that we have. Uh, I was just looking over the contributors to it the other day. We have uh, data scientists, university people, um, people who are working in. Um, data analysis uh, within larger companies. Also sometimes notice, okay, well, this isn't quite the way I want it. We'll submit 
pull requests or issues and when they notice things. Sure. Sort of the normal scratching your own itch kind of thing. That, right. That, yeah. And that that's great. I mean, if uh, more people are kind of using it from the project that it was split out from, I think that's a good indication that it's a nice separate entity mm -hmm. in and of itself. That, that's cool. Um, at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on to sort of a project demo walkthrough phase. So, Chrisman, I know you have some things to share with, uh, with us. So if you want to go sure. ahead and share your screen, that would be excellent. You can walk us through some some coupai. Push the buttons here and make sure that I've got the right thing shared. Is that showing OK? Uh, yeah. Perfect. So. Great. So um, I wanted to um, highlight, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Python and, and who have used uh, NumPy before, this will all look pretty familiar. And that's really the point, um, is to show that using this is very straightforward. And uh, as much as possible, we wanted to make it a, a drop-in replacement that would just allow you to use the same code that you've gotten used to if you're a NumPy user and use that same code to work on your GPU. So uh, on the left of the screen, you can see NumPy on the CPU, and we have import NumPy as NP, and then you uh, making ourselves some uh, matrices using random numbers, and then multiplying dot matrix multiplication between those two. So then uh, the corresponding code on CuPy is going to look pretty much the same. The only change is that we're going to be importing CuPy as CP and then using CP random and rand and other things to do the same matrix multiplication. But this is going to be much faster for large uh, matrices because it's being done on the GPU instead. So you can also swap it back and forth between these two. So to take something from uh, the CPUs to the GPU, you can just use a CuPy function, CP as array, and that'll move that over to the GPUs. And then to move it back, then you can use the CuPy function as NumPy to move the matrix back over to the CPU. And in fact, you can, you can even make code that is agnostic to whether it's being done on the GPU or CPU, uh, such that it will just basically take either one of them and use the appropriate. And so we call this XP, because it could be either NP or C, NumPy or CuPy. <laughs> and same, the same matrix multiplication there, so you can use it on either side. So, of course, uh, there's a point to this, and that is really you want to speed up your calculation for larger uh, matrix multiplications. So looking at the, the speed differences, we have some benchmark code here. So if you're dealing with small calculations, uh, there's a little bit of overhead when you have to move your matrix over to the GPU. So for small matrix sizes, you won't see an advantage with CuPy. NumPy will be faster because it's already on the memory uh, on the CPU memory and can just run through the CPU very quickly. Whereas once you start getting into larger matrices, that's where CuPy becomes more beneficial. So we have some basic benchmark code there. Um, basically, if you look at define test, uh, we're making, we're changing in a matrix, uh, reshaping it, and then we're transposing it, and then we're squaring the matrix. So uh, we have some several sizes. We have a 10,000 by 10,000 matrix, uh, 100,000 by 100,000 matrix, and, and so on. And you can see that about the point where you're about a million by a million matrix size is when CuPy and NumPy are about, as, about the same speed, about two milliseconds for both of them. But after this, the benefits of having the calculations done on the GPU become much more clear with CuPy as the next one is uh, about 12 milliseconds for CuPy, but 55 milliseconds for NumPy. And it continues that CuPy is about six times faster than doing the calculations with NumPy. So at um, 100 uh, million by 100 million uh, size matrix, the transpose and then squaring of the matrix is going to be about 85 milliseconds on CuPy, whereas it's going to be 500 milliseconds on NumPy. So um, lots of the, the AI frameworks will be very heavy in matrix multiplication and many other applications as well. Some of the voice applications, uh, distribution applications, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other applications or projects that are using CuPy a little later, really benefit from this speed. And speed is, is money in terms of developing new results. 
working through things. Right. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So, so in your original example there, you were, um, it, it looks like you're all, you're allocating memory on the GPU directly and you could keep all of your calculation on that memory. That's like local to the GPU. Right. So you, yes. yeah, in the best case scenario, you're actually not doing a lot of trans, no, uh, trans, uh, having the memory being passed back and forth between main memory and, and GPU. Right. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So how much of uh, NumPy is kind of implemented at this point? Is it? Um, or the NumPy we're, API? Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty thorough on that. Um, as we went through it, we did we did find some, some undocumented um, behaviors in NumPy, which was sort of interesting, because we were trying to make it, I mean, we <laughs> obviously, as a nice test case, right, you know exactly what it should look like. And sometimes we're like, it's not exactly what... <laughs> So uh, in that case, even though it wasn't technically what was expected, we decided to follow exactly what, what NumPy would produce. Ah, uh, I see. Right, it just so that it, it was expected and that it wouldn't, someone wouldn't be running CoPy and suddenly find, yes, technically that's correct, and the NumPy wasn't, but still it doesn't match the output. So we, we went with the NumPy standard. Um, I would say that we're, we're fairly thoroughly uh, have implemented pretty much all of NumPy, but there are still a few functions that are not implemented. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, the code, the code snippets that you shared look very familiar. It looks like a very nice interface to work in. Yeah, one of the, one of the first things that we try uh, when we're looking to see where the CoPy work is just um, import CoPy as NP, right? Right. <laughs> Right. Just uh, swap, swap out the library and see if it just works. Is and it, it works more often than you would think, actually. Right. I mean, if you wanted to be truly maniacal, I think you would go into sys.modules and swap out NumPy for for CuPy in sys.modules, and then everything would use it. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, NumPy. Be, and all... Yeah. Sorry, Tony. I think I... After you. After you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, that that was it. So, um, uh, one one quick thing. Uh, Crispin was nice enough to uh, share a uh, Kupai, uh notebook for us uh, to use on Colab. I basically only consume media in the notebook. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll share we'll tweet out a link uh, so that people can play around with Kupai and speed up their code Im uh, immediately. Excellent. Yeah, it's a it's a very neat notebook. So. I encourage everyone, uh, even if you're watching later, to go ahead and check that out. Um, I'm sure it'll be available for a while. So, yeah, um, it shows uh, it shows the, the demonstration that we did, and then also it does a comparison and speed between for k means calculations uh, using CuPy, NumPy, and then SciPy. Yep, excellent. Um, so at this point, we're going to transition into our roadmap discussion, um, and so this again is. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen an episode of Open Source Directions before, this is kind of the meat of the episode. This is where we have a discussion about not just what the project is, but sort of where the project is going and, and provides a discussion about what the opportunities are there for people uh, to either join in and contribute via code contributions or to jump in and contribute because, hey, they like that feature and they want to fund it. Um, and so try to keep those things in mind as we go through this section in terms of these are places where Kupai could potentially, you know, collaborate with you and you could collaborate with Kupai uh, to, as an open source project to, to meet a common goal. Um, so the, I'm going to hand it off to Tony to go ahead and ask our, our first question here, go over the first roadmap. I don't. So let's get started with like big picture here. What's the what is the vision for Kupai? Well, uh, we really uh, as when NumPy came out, NumPy was originally um, written by Travis Oliphant in order to standardize the matrix calculations and provide one specific library. And we'd like Kupai to fill that role to be the go-to library for people doing data science on GPUs. So uh, as I mentioned before, at this point, uh, Kupai really only does that for NVIDIA GPUs. And as one of the many people I think, I've, I'm doing this on a Mac, 
um, which doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU. And I know a lot of people also have other kinds of GPU other than NVIDIA. Longer term, we'd like to be able to expand the capabilities of Kupai so as to be able to work on more than just uh, NVIDIA GPUs. Yeah. Um, yeah, at CUDA actually stands for uh, Computation Unified Device Architecture. Um, and we'd like to make Kupai step back to that so that it would be your computation unification for Python, uh, such that it would be able to work on other types of GPUs as well. Um, also, we're, uh, we're, now that we've mostly we've covered what we feel are the critical parts of NumPy, we also want to move forward and cover some SciPy as well. So we'll be expanding into the, the SciPy functions so that they can also be done on the GPU when, that, when the speed, extra speed of the GPU is really important. So we want, to, we want to, first of all, make sure that as many people as, uh, who could use it at least know that Kupai is there and available um, so that we can not re have people have to program the same thing. And we can get together and make one platform, one library that's really strong for doing computation on the GPU. And then moving forward, we'd like to look at other uh, architectures um, and GPU kinds and companies so that we can continue to have Kupai be the standard for usage on those other platforms as well. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that makes that makes me think. So um, in terms of kind of the, the SciPy effort and, and things like that, or the consideration of SciPy, which sounds like you would definitely need a lot of hands <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to start to tackle. Um, yeah. How does Kupai handle, even in, in, the, in the NumPy stuff right now, how does that handle linear algebra? And are there special kind of routines that get called for that? Or, or you, it's, it's not, I imagine it's not just a uh, BLAS and LAPAC and, and all that stuff, but it, is there something else that's going on there? Or I mean, it, it all hooks into the, the CUDA library, although Kupai itself is uh, still over 90% Python. Uh -huh. So it, it, um, most of the logic and the, the inner workings of Kupai are, are still Python, which is where we wanted to keep it. We feel that's what the users are, and that's, uh, as Kupai, it should be transparent as much as possible. Sure. But um, as it gets down into the, the CUDA and the CUDA-NN as well, then there are more advanced functions where they can use, where you can do fusion, where you can create your own kernels as well. Mm. Um, so if you're looking for the really the extra speed, an extra 10 or 20%, then people are able to create their own custom kernels uh, using Kupai, which is sort of going beyond the original mandate. NumPy doesn't exactly allow you to do custom kernels. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, it's something that the people who are really, people come to Kupai or look to do calculation on their GPUs because they're looking for that extra speed up. Um, so then being able to make your own kernel then that could be even 10 or 20% faster it becomes very important. Right. So, yeah, mostly it then uses C++ and, yeah, and uh, those interfaces to work for them with the uh, CUDA libraries. C could you just briefly explain CUDNN for the since it's come up a couple of times for the listeners who might not be familiar with this, the sure. GPU space, really. Um, <laughs> sure, there's a, there's a lot of acronyms as you go into the, um, <laughs> uh, into the NVIDIA world. So, so CUDA was the, the original library that they came out with as the comp computation unified uh, device architecture. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful for me still. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that, that's what they then based most of their other of the other architectures that they put on top of that. I think uh, I think Nvidia now doesn't even break it down. They don't even use it as an acronym. They just say it's CUDA. That's all it ever was. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but then they found that as uh, EPUs started to be used more and more for neural architectures, neural networks, then they needed more specialized functions that would help to do the training and the inference for neural networks. So then they came up with CUDNN which is CUDA Neural Networks. Uh, it's just a short abbreviation. So that then it has some shortcuts and some uh, specific um, functions that will be faster for doing neural network kind of training. I see. Mm. Right. And so that's something that's very important to Chainer. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms of looking to the future and sort of this broader vision and roadmap discussion, who are your current users right now, and who would you like them to be in the future? How would you like to see the Kupai community grow? 
Well, uh, as I mentioned, the it, uh, we're still very strong with the original base of Chainer users. Um, there was actually an implementation that we saw a little while ago of PyTorch that used uh, Kupai as the back end for doing the GPU calculation, which we found to be um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if this has been fixed. Uh, I'm not an expert on PyTorch, but uh, they still had, at least before version 1.0, they had inconsistencies between the Torch uh, syntax and NumPy syntax, which would just really mess people up, oh, right? Yeah. Versus the axes kind of things. Um, and I, I haven't found out if that's been fixed in the latest version, but it's the primary users, I think, are still going to be people who are doing the neural networks. Mm -hmm. as that is going forward and people who are using Chainer. And then there are other projects which we've had who've uh, approached us as they were trying to go through the same kind of a problem and decided to use Kupai as their back end. Um, one of them is uh, Pomegranate, uh, which is a probabilistic modeling library which uses Kupai as its back end for the users who want to do it on the GPU. Uh, there's another one called Spacey, S-P-A-C-Y, uh, which is a natural language processing toolkit, which also uses Kupai as its back end. So, well, well, right now, about 50% or so of our users, just based off of downloads, I think, would be people who are using it for neural networks. We think that there's a lot more people who will be using it for different kinds of calculation and data analysis going forward. And we'd like other projects to go ahead and use it because that will uh, hopefully save other projects the effort of creating a GPU interface and working through the NumPy and all that syntax and architecture, as well as improving the robustness of Kupai by making sure that we really have everything covered and that it works exactly as you expect it would and, and give us more support for increasing new functions in the future. Right. Well, that's, that. oh, pardon. That was uh, awesome to hear. Uh, I love Spacey. Uh, this kind of makes me want to go tinker around with that on uh, Colab very soon. Um, <laughs> but uh, clearly, you guys have formed a bond with the uh, autonomous uh, house cleaning industry. Um, what <laughs> other kinds of collaborations uh, are you guys? Uh, is Kupai looking to form with uh, with other industry? We've been we've been working with several of the other um, open source toolkits. Um, so we've uh, we've had some pull requests. We've worked with Numba, uh, which then allows Kupai to have uh, just-in-time compilation, compilation, so JIT uh, compiling. Uh, we've also been working with Dask uh, to allow scaling for uh, Kupai calculations and parallelization along with scheduling. Uh, so we're we're always uh, welcoming other um, collaborations with other frameworks as people help to expand. Uh, what people, the kind of calculations and analysis that people are doing on the GPUs. So always welcome. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a really important point to drive home here is that, you know, just even though it, just because it's open source doesn't mean uh, that you're not, that you don't want industry collaboration. It's quite the opposite, in fact. Like those are kind of one of those things that, drives the life blood of the project in some sense. And so, um, yes. yeah, and so that's great to hear. Um, are there domains that you would like Kupai to be used in more than they're currently being used, right? So are there particular areas you'd like to see Kupai expand into other than maybe the natural language processing ones, and et cetera? So. Yeah, we think, there's, we think there's a lot of areas where it's um, maybe not known yet. Um, Within the neural network uh, world, ever since um, they had the uh, ResNet that was done on the GPUs, um, and that basically set the benchmarks at the time, and then converted most of the neural network calculations over to the GPUs. So it, the GPUs are the place to be. is fairly well known within the neural network communities. But I think there's a lot of other areas where they have much heavier data calculation requirements um, Within finance, for example, if you're doing stock market analysis, um, the other uh, science areas, the distributions and some other things, I think that people are less aware of the benefits that they could get by using GPUs. Um, and so when those those areas become familiar with it, then I think that would uh, make more people interested in it and drive more usage, hopefully, and give us more code to work with in the future. Yeah, that, no, that's great. I think that's a, a very natural tie-in here. Um, Tony, did you have any other questions for Chrisman? Or 
No, um, I just want people to use this in finite elements. Uh, it sounds like those <laughs> computations are pretty ripe for it. Yeah, that's a that's another good good space for this. I feel like as well. So um, at this point, we've kind of finished up the, our roadmap discussion. Um, unless you, there's anything else you wanted to add, Crispin, um, came to mind. So we'll go ahead and transition to our Q and A session. So we've gotten a couple questions in during this webinar, and feel free to post more. Both of these are from Ralph Gomers. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> who, uh, if you if you don't know Ralph, go look him up. Um, so the first question is, uh, he mentioned that the 6x speed up benchmark includes the data transfer to the GPU, question Correct. mark, right? So yeah, OK. Um, so for, for a more complex algorithm, uh, that one-time data transfer is going to be less important. So the speed ups are, you get better speed ups effectively. That, is that more yes. or less Yeah. Yeah, so the, the more that you can keep the, um, the calculation on the GPU, the more benefit that you'll get out of it. Um, uh, so it, it's the size of the matrix, but also the, the more uh, operations that you do on the matrix, then it's going to benefit from being on the GPU. Right. It, it makes sense, right? The expensive piece is the, moving the data around. Data locality is very important in all of these calculations everywhere, right? So, um, yeah, that seems to never change. Uh, Tony, you want to go ahead and read the next question? Uh, so, uh, surprisingly enough, we have another question from Ralph, um, <laughs> and, uh, Ralph is, uh, interested to, uh, is to see how, uh, SciPy will work out of the box once QPy has, uh, the array ufunc and array function, uh, methods on them, uh, and what the main bottlenecks are that they could remove from SciPy, um, to help you guys get there. Yeah, that's, uh, the, the ufunc is something that, uh, I, we're looking forward to, and we've been uh, already taking a look at that. Um, I know that um, Travis from uh, is very interested in that, and we've been speaking with him about uh, implementing the U function and, and working more in the synergy. Um, I mean, lo longer term, we would want to get to the point where, uh, and I know that uh, many people are working on this in the community, where the the all of the matrix formats are basically shared between the different uh, storage or calculation areas so they can be used without having to bother the programmer with doing uh, transitions to move them to the different uh, calculation areas. So uh, yeah, I really, I'm not sure what the bottle, bottlenecks are for that right now. It's something that we're gonna have to get into as we're implementing the UFUNC uh, functions within Kubai. So that's something we have, we're, we're wondering as well. Yeah, I mean, just to comment here a little, I think, frankly, this would be the sort of thing that if there was a sprint or some sort of hackathon where everyone could actually just be in the same room, uh, that would be extraordinarily helpful for answering a lot of those questions. At least that's how I would try to tackle it. So if, uh, if there's anyone out there who's interested in funding, a, you, getting you and Ralph together in the same room with some other people who really know the code base, I think that would be an awesome idea just to plug that here. Um, so, uh, I, if there are any, there's one other question from Michael, uh, has just come in. So Michael Eaton asks, does Kupai work with Dask delayed interface with the Dask delayed interface? Um, I'm not sure about the, the full, uh, compatibility with, uh, Dask yet. I know that we've, uh, we've been working with the Dask people on that. So I, I'm going to have to say, I'm not familiar with that one. But uh, it's something that we'd be very interested in having a, an issue or a pull request for. OK. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. It's another place people can come in and, and contribute. So uh, yeah, something that is a, a nice area to, to develop on. Um, at this point, I don't think there are any other questions. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on and kind of start closing out the webinar at this point. So we'll start with our world famous rant section. So in this section, uh, everyone on the call will get a 15 second soapbox to rant about whatever topic they want. Um, Chrisman, it is your soapbox. Right. So, uh, yeah, one of the things, um, having lived in Japan for a while, um, it's really hard to get used to American sized food portions. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, 
every time, so I've been here for a while and the, the servings are quite a bit smaller here in Japan. And so every time I go back home to visit family or for a conference or something, I, I always forget that、uh, whatever I order, I'm going to get a lot more of it than I expect. <laughs> so,、uh, yeah, I just、um, I really have grown to appreciate the small, very flavorful portions that they, they like here in Japan. And so, whenever I go back, I have to then change back to okay, maybe just go with some appetizers or have some friends and split it with the friends. But、uh, yeah, too much. <laughs> Too true.、Uh, so, what, so, what you're saying is, I probably go broke try, trying to be in Japan. I just、uh -huh. have to eat so many portions. <laughs>、um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so、uh, I'm really in into、uh, Colab、uh, on Google Drive right now.、Um, I found it useful in some community events,、uh, in some teaching experiences that I've had. Uh, I've been using it internally、uh, with consulting projects, and now I get to use GPUs and PyTorch and TensorFlow.、Um, I found it just to be a surprisingly well rounded tool.、Uh, in fact, it's basically become my word processor. I've sort of replaced Google Docs with it. So I, I encourage anybody to try it out. Excellent. <laughs> For my rant today, I'd like to just again pick on something,、uh, some Americanism. In particular,、uh, for the past three months, every month I've had a conference of some sort in Times Square, not just New York City, but right in Times Square. And spending that much time、uh, in one of the busiest parts of the country、uh, has driven me a little mad. So, if we could move the conferences elsewhere for a change, you know, just mix it up for November,、uh, I, would be, I would really appreciate that.、Um, That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You can find us on Twitter at Quantsite AI. If you are interested in funding open source projects, including Chainer and Kupai,、uh, you can find all of our project roadmaps at quantsite.com slash projects. Chrisman, where can people find you and Kupai? So、uh, for Kupai、uh, and Chainer, there's、uh, chainer.org and kupai.chainer.org. The, the websites for those are just Google Kupai and It's、uh, pretty unique. It'll come right up at the top.、Uh, for myself,、uh, I'm Chrisman at、uh, preferred.jp, and、uh, Preferred Networks is my company that I work for. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Join us again next episode for a lively discussion on intake, which I promise you will be worth it. Thanks. Thank you, Chrisman. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye.